Hello and welcome again to the episode of the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. Girlfriend, again, she's been having car issues. Oh, too much volume. Feedback. She's been having too many car issues. She's still out there in her own hometown, so fortunately I'm here doing the show by myself. Um, again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, all those that watched the SummerSlam and NXT TakeOver for Brooklyn. Thank you guys very much. Again, please feel free to leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe. We Also leave an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. I know just a very quick programming note. I don't have time to post that one video. I promised everyone about how to make yummy chicken wraps. I'll probably do that for the Lucha Underground episode. I'll make probably Friday night, maybe? Friday, Friday night, Saturday. Sometime around then I'll post that. Um, I do like to get my raw recaps, my raw recaps and reviews up really as quickly as I can. So we'll see. Um, again, you will see those kind of as little bonus footage. I'm not 90 videos. I am 10 videos away from a one, from a 100 videos. That's amazing. I can't believe I've made 100 videos already. I'm at 90. Wow. I think I'm almost at 2,000 views, too. I mean, it's not ideally where I wanted to be, but I'll take it, though. I can't complain. So let's get into the subject of the Let's talk about some raw. Um, Roman Reigns starts off. Again, really to a mix of cheers and boos. That kind of mixed reaction. Um, I do like the way he carries the belt to the stage. It's different. He just kind of like flings it over his shoulder. Just carries it there. So, yeah, I'm just sauntering to the stage. Doesn't even show the belt. The belt's in the, the kind of front plates in the back. Okay, it's not bad. Um, then he says, I'm going to be a fighting champion. Finn Balor, get out here. I think it's a huge response. However, though, he's going to be facing Man Balor, not Demon Balor. And we'll see how this plays out later in this episode. Then Cold Water Baron. Hey, you're not me. You're not Finn. You're not Man Finn. I'm not fighting Demon Finn. And he just runs down Finn. Um, and then you have a very quick... Actually, very little mention of SummerSlam at this point. And this led to our first match that Kurt Angle made. Again, the funny thing is, he comes up to the You Suck Chance. Um, oh, th they were chanting You Suck to Roman Reigns, too. Roman Reigns has to get with Angle, and just and Kurt Angle has to tell him, hey, you just need to, you just need to have to flow with it. They're going to chant what they want. To. And then it was, it was pretty good. Then again, we have the Baron Corbin versus Bobby Lashley match, and that was actually a match. It was fun. It did what it was supposed to do. It's a decent back and forth. I think the main reason I gave this cheeseburger rating is because Lashley has some ups, man. He's athletic. I think he also got busted open or had a bloody nose because the ref, after a commercial break, actually just was started to wear gloves. Lashley well, can take a rough bump too. He had a very rough bump. He got pushed through the ropes, and like the the middle upper back of his hit on the ring edge, not the apron. The edge. The edge is really the hardest part. So that's where they have the metal pieces at. Everything else is kind of plywood. And has some spring to it. That true metal edge is your classic. It's a great lining up, right? It's your classic almost 90, do, do, 90, 90 degree or L shape. Like 
piece of fairly thick metal, too. So, that looked like it really hurt. Um, lastly, again, he comes back. Corbin tries to come back. Corbin's just a, a, a whiny bitch. And that was that match. Again, a good classic cheeseburger match. Then you have them hyping up the Australia Super Show with Triple H and The Undertaker being the headliner. So this leads to our next match. A six-team, a six, six-woman tag team match. Oh. Sorry, folks. It's been a long day. I had to take, I had to take my cat to the vet. I've been up since nine-ish after just going to bed at midnight and probably having too much tequila and too much really yummy food. But then we had some, it was, so it was a six woman tag team match with Sasha Banks, Bailey, the Boston Hugs connection, and Ember Moon. This is a right squad. Ember Moon's outfit is the best there. I mean, she she's learning. She she can't she can't wear booty shorts anymore because because again you'll see a full Ember Moon. I mean, she, she's just fun to watch. And my only question is, how does Liv wrestle with her hair? I mean, I know women have longer hair, but her hair like kind of spider webs all over her face and stuff. At least Alicia Fox. The short haircut. Bailey has a ponytail. Sasha's is is relatively short. Uh, I mean, it's not as long or 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 as, or as whispery. Uh, Liv Morgan again. It's just that really weird whispery kind of getting everything hair. Ruby Riot again has longer hair. I like Ruby Riot with short hair though. And oh, I forgot her name now. Uh oh, this isn't good. Liv Morgan, Logan, Sarah Logan has kind of sh like medium, like normal hair. But again, it's good. The Rise Squad—they know how to do the tag team cheap shots. Hey, they've watched at least AWA or WCCW. I like that. Again, that pop-up headbutt of of Sarah Logan's—that looks. Although, although, although Logan still has to learn how to tag because she's like, come on, tag, tag, tag. How do I tag? Like, uh, so then it, it was a, it was a really fun match to watch. I mean, again, because it was a six woman tag match, eventually all all the women get involved. And the Riot Squad do pick up the win, and this was a good cheeseburger quality match. It was fun. Um, chance that we want Sasha. That was good. Then that really took up the first hour of Raw, which went really quick. The second hour hour of Raw. Slog. Oh. Um, Triple H comes out for a promo. Again, Triple H looks like he's getting old. I I want to say he's. In his mid to late forties, he has like the the baggy eyes, and and I and I know he keeps his eyebrows up, but how about his age? And even when I furrow my brows, I still have a forehead. Although I have a lot of forehead though. But it was good. Um, he also changed his Latin phrase. It used to be Rex Pugnacious Pugnacious Ferrum. Now it's something else. Um, then you have a little SummerSlam main event recap. Then your, your next match. Oh, when Triple H came out, they started to chant, chant out the game, 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 and then NXT, NXT. Then they showed a picture of him with um, Undertaker and John Michaels Harper. Here they were just, they just started to chant HBK, HBK. Oh, that was a real jerk. Oh yeah, cause, cause right behind the announce table, there was, there was some like dork posing. 
muscles. Sit down, you dork. Geek. Nerd. Nothing to show off. You're just pissing off the people behind you. Also, hello, Michelle. And hi, Goto. Follow signs. And Simon Miller is someone's father. I just like the signs they make. Those are half the fun to watch. Um, again, after the Triple H promo, let's get back on track. Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler. It really started off. Really, it was a really good technical wrestling match. There was some good stuff. I mean, classic collegiate freestyle Greco-Roman takedowns. Um, the thing is, it's so easy to distract any pro wrestler. It's scary. You have to have like the attention span of a chipmunk or something. Uh, again, so you have Seth and Drew get going toe to toe. I know then. Oh yeah, Seth and Drew went toe to toe. I mean, the end was amazing. It was it was almost a pop up double underhook DDT or like a pop up dirty deeds. The problem is like Rollins just kind of left his IC belt somewhere, and like the next scene you show of him is like he got him like, where did he get it? But again, this was a really good, fun cheeseburger match. Can't complain about it. Elias comes out. Again, runs on the crowd. Kurt Hawkins comes out in his Mets colors. I think he is from New York. And this led to a match. Kurt Hawkins versus Elias Sampson. Hawkins got in very little offense. All he did was roll, try roll-ups. And Elias paid attention in wrestling 203. Roll up defense because eventually Elias got the win with a drift away, and this was a ham sandwich match. I mean, not, not really too much to say about that. Then you have Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke has to be careful, she's, she's giving those soft, goofy looks to Apollo Crews. Yeah, you know, the kind. Um, this led to, again, the match between the Authors of Pain and Titus Worldwide. I think it's like the third time they've done this. Um, it's it's kind of getting old. They just have to, like, kind of bury this or something somewhere. Like, finish it, like, next week. Just say, okay, listen. I don't have the stats on how to beat these guys. Only they have the algorithm. Either that or... <laughs> or else bring in... Um, not Blanchard. Wow, my memory is really bad. I'm tired. But bring back what's his face so he can explain to. So he can explain to Dana Brooke. So Dana Brooke. Why is your top? Why is your top caught off in the middle? Why? Why are you showing so much cleavage? You don't have the algorithm. Only I have the algorithm. So again, Dana Brooke obviously does not have the algorithm. The AOP really, for the most part, dominate the match. And they toss out Titus O'Neil, leaving Apollo Crews to fend for himself. Apollo Crews is amazingly athletic. That's why this is a ham sandwich. I mean, he did like a, a, a twisting moonsault off the top rope. And then as he was bench pressed off, from his pinfall, he hit he trans he transitioned rather smoothly and quickly to a standing moonsault. However, they hit the last chapter. Um, I do kind of miss the super collider. They probably hold that off for special events. But this whole hour, oh, I'm just like, yeah, that was kind of a ham sandwich. You know the Ronda Rousey belt presentation. The bells were there. The bells were there. Alicia Fox was there. Dana Brooke was there. All, all the other normal cast of characters from Raw were there. Um, Stephanie just really faced the the heel authority on this. I'm saying, oh, how I brought it. Uh, how I, I meaning Stephanie McMahon brought in Ronda Rousey. I I did this. I did yeah whatever. Eventually, Ronda Rousey says, no, I'm not here to break everyone's arms, just those who deserve it. Tosses her, breaks her arm. 
It's actually not an arm breaker, it's a bicep cutter. But that's just getting technical. Then you had two matches in a row, and I'm going to talk about each of them individually and how they fit together in combination. So you had Bo Dallas of the B Team versus Scott Dawson. Bo Dallas enjoys that theme. B Team, B Team, go, go, go. I don't know who enjoys it more, actually. I don't know if, Axel, if Chris Axel enjoys it more or if Bo Dallas enjoys it more. But Bo Dallas took on Scott Dawson of the Revival. And this was, I mean, this was a, a good match. It was fun. I mean, Dawson has skills. I mean, he looks like he, he would fit in in, like, the old NWA 1970s. I mean, this match, even though it was really good, I mean, this is a weird tweener match. It's better than a ham sandwich, but not quite a cheeseburger, so I'll give it a special rank. This was just a hamburger. So it's that weird exception. That's why I have no, no graphic. But again, it was, it was good, though. It was fun. It told a good story. The crowd was doing the wave. Even the crowd was getting bored of the food. Then, the next match, again, Scott Dawson won that. Again, it was a cheeseburger. More or less, it was a cheeseburger match. Curtis Axel came in versus he challenged Dash Wilder. Again, there were some nice backbreakers by Dash Wilder. I don't know who has better backbreakers, him or Roderick Strong, and that's saying a lot. I mean, you can tell Curtis Axel really trained under his dad. He has most of his dad in him. He uses all of Mr. Perfect moves, Kurt Hang's moves. Again, this was a really, this was a step beneath. This was really like a ham sandwich. I think this was a little bit quicker. Um, not as fast paced because in the previous match, I was shocked. Bo Dallas can run the ropes back and forth forever and do moves off them. That, that's why I gave the cheeseburger. This was a ham sandwich match. It was okay. Together, though, in combination, this is what I want to get to. They're telling a story where Bo Dallas is not a good singles wrestler, Curtis Axel is not a good singles wrestler. You put them together, though. And they're the tag team champions. So it's one of those things, yeah, I'm okay, you're okay, but together we're great. And I would give overall this this whole this whole segment with both matches really is a cheeseburger it's a cheeseburger match. At least they didn't do 50-50 booking. I'll give them credit for that, because they that, that's the easy way. Oh, Bo Dallas wins, Curtis Axel loses, or Bo Dallas loses, Curtis Axel wins. The 50-50 booking. But again, they, they, they got it creative, and again, it's good. And then we have Chris being told to go on vacation. Um, then there's the main event of the evening. In this corner, the challenger from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland, Ben Baller. And in this corner, the, cha the Universal Champion, one-third of the Sierra Hotel India Echo Lima Delta Shield, Roman Reigns. And this was actually a really fun match. I, I do like the idea that Roman's now this fighting champion. I mean, they, they cheered the heck out of Finn. Unfortunately, it was just Man Balor, so you knew Finn wasn't was not winning the belt. If it was Demon Balor, that would have been a different issue. But yeah, it's this classic Roman strength versus Finn speed and and finesse. And again, this whole segment match thing was a flaming yawn match. I'll I'll, I'll get to why more so in just a couple seconds. But this match itself, just Finn versus Roman Reigns, was a high-quality surf and surf meal. I mean, Finn, when the pace was quicker, Finn was Finn was in control. When the pace was slower, Roman was in control. Again, once you start to add in this idea of a clash of styles and actually makes that the focus of the match, that's good stuff.
again, this was really good. Um, I think the end kind of came for Finn when Rain knows no solo chop. Again, whenever Finn Balor would get out of a pinning situation, too sweet! And then, of course, Roman Reigns wins with the spear to Finn Balor. Brown! The crowd goes absolutely bonkers. Holy shit. Get these hands. Then there's some idiot in the crowd with a Hogan sign. I mean, if Hulk Hogan was wrestling, yeah, I can see bringing a Hogan sign. I mean, I've kind of, I'm kind of, and this is just my opinion, and I'll get on my soapbox for like 30 seconds. This is just my opinion. Hulk Hogan's from a different age and era where, yeah, they, they use racial slurs. And again, you're asking a man who spent being over the top not to be over the top. It's probably kind of tough. I mean, I don't condone what he said. I'm just saying I'm not going to beat him up for it. I mean, back in the day, especially, especially when it involves daughters and really touchy-feely family stuff, I tend to give more leeway well, maybe because there's an emotional factor involved. I mean, so some people bury Hulk Hogan. Some people say, oh, he's turning a new leaf. Like, he's Hulk Hogan. And, again, I'm not, I'm not condoning it. I mean, I'm sure I've said my fair share of not-so-nice things to people. And I'm sure people have said, and, and I know, people have said not-so-nice things about me. Some of which I'm like, really? But I think once I got called the N-word and just looked at my arm, I'm like, dude, wrong skin tone. Played it off that way. But again, that's neither here nor there. Again, my, my big thing is that if you're going to bring in this big picture, show off Hulk Hogan, you're blocking the people behind you, and Hulk Hogan's not even there to watch. So, yeah. So, Braun Strowman comes in, start, starts to cash in, Gives the briefcase to the referee. Jojo makes the announcement. There is no bell ring. Because once Jojo made the announcement. Sierra, Hotel, India, Echo, Lima, Delta, Shield. Came out. And then it was just really a three on one. Braun Strowman's great. He did get his looks in. But eventually he did. He did Get the three person power bomb through the announce table. And, and that's how it ended. So I don't know if that's an official match because the bell never rung or if they're going to continue this. This is why it was a flaming on match. No one expected it. The whole crowd was shocked. They heard the Sierra Hotel India Echo Lima Delta. And the whole crowd went bonkers. So again, that's why this is a flaming young match. Again, I have to make this a short video. You have to do some some quick edits to it. But I have to get to sleep because I have to wake up and open up tomorrow. So I have to wake up about seven ish. So I need my nap or something. I'd like to thank everyone for watching again. Please feel free to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Also feel free to send an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And just wait. Either 2,000 views or 100 videos. There's going to be a special celebration. I'll see everyone later. Bye.